Hi guys, so I just want to share with you a message that was placed on my heart and it's entitled God wants you to show up in the midst of the chaos. Um, so this morning my friend messaged me, you know, don't go to church, stay indoors, that sort of thing. And I was like, I appreciate the concern, but end of the day, my obedience and my commands come from the Lord. So if the Lord tells me to do something, I, for me, I would want to obey it despite the fear that's being instigated right now. And you know, this message comes because of what we're going through right now, the coronavirus. And I want to remind you of something that you don't stop working in the midst of chaos, especially when you've been given a mandate, when you've been given a purpose or a command. You know, you don't stop doing the work because you have a certain thing that you're targeting. You have a certain focus. Um, I want to take us to some scriptures, especially for those of us who are panicky, who you know, they don't know what to do, they don't know where to turn, and more so especially for those of us who proclaim to be Christians, but we're not practicing that Christian faith that the Lord has given to us when we decided to give our life to Him. Um, the first verse that I will go to is in Second Timothy 5 verse 7, and it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That says to me that when things are happening around me, I need to take a step back and I need to think, okay, God, what are your promises? What did you see that I have? What did you see that I can do? What did you see I have access to? And he says, as a believer of me, when certain things come your way, when darts come your way, when arrows come your way, you have to remember that one, you have the power. Two, you are of love. So whatever you do has to be brought out in love, it has to be birthed through love. And secondly, you have a sound mind so that you're not going to allow all these different elements to come into your head and, you know, direct where you should go. You're not supposed to allow fear to dictate your next mood because it is in having fear that we can sometimes stumble and go on the wrong path. And the Lord doesn't want that for our lives. And as a Christian, if you're out here panicking, you have to remember you're not supposed to. You're supposed to go to your Lord who's the refuge. You're supposed to go to him and say, Daddy, give me wisdom. You say, if anybody lacks wisdom, ask and they will receive it from you. And so you do that. You take the necessary precautions. You use wisdom in whatever you're going to do to prepare for this virus, you know, this pandemic, this thing. But you don't allow yourself to become so panicky to the point where you forget the promises of the Lord and what you have access to, especially as a child of the Lord. So this one was no fear. The second one, we're going to go into Psalm 91. And this is a very long um, scripture, but I really want to read it because there are so many good things in there to pull out. And this talks about the Lord's protection. It's entitled, Safety of Abiding in the Presence of God. <clears throat> he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. His truth, that's the word of the Lord. That's what keeps you going when you don't want to go. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night or the terrors of this world, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right but it shall not come near you. So things may be happening in the world. As a child of God, you have the authority and the power to stand on certain promises and say, Jesus, you're going to do this for me. You're going to protect me in your word. You say in whatever Psalm, whatever scripture, and you stand on these words. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. That's your home, your people, those around you. As a believer, you have access to certain things. And people around you tend to also benefit from your blessings. Even though they may not, live in, may not be living their life um, for the Lord and these things, 
they do actually benefit from you being a Christian and you walking in that authority. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against a stone, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample under foot. They're under your foot. These diseases are under your foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He will set you on high because you have professed that he is the Lord God. He shall come upon me and I will answer him. You will go to him and he will answer you with any questions you may have. I will be with him in trouble. He will be with you in trouble. He will be with me in trouble because we have given our lives to him. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy you and show him my salvation. So as a Christian, you're guaranteed long life. Yes, we have certain purposes to fulfill. But in the Lord, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. So, you know, this verse really talks about the protection that you are given as a believer of the Lord. The next verse is in 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. And this one says... It says, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. This one talks about, I can't find it. Okay, yeah. This one talks about, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. When you become a believer and a follower of Christ, you literally become a soldier in his army. I know we talk about praying often, but we don't talk about spiritual warfare that we as Christians have to undergo to get into certain things, to tap into certain realms of the Lord. And here it's saying, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life or the civilians. So basically, our commander is the Lord and we must take our, um, our instructions from him. When we get so entangled in what's happening in the world, then we lose focus. And this verse in particular talks about having clear focus when you have enlisted in the army of the Lord. We each have a purpose, and that purpose we need to show up for it every day, in all ways, however we can, at the discretion and at the obedience of the Lord. And so when you're in that um when you're in that army, you have to remember that your commands come from the Lord and you have to do what he says. So going back to my example for today, I knew the Lord, you know, I'm supposed to go to church every Sunday, but in particular, I knew he was calling me to go to church because this morning there was just something different. I woke up way before my alarm. I felt the Holy Spirit. I felt everything just coming into play and he alone knows why I had to go to church, but I made it to church because well, that's one of my purposes to be at church to support my ministry in just showing up sometimes so yes i show up to be blessed by the holy spirit to get the word but i show up for the people who are there and some people need to see you show up so that they can now show up for what they have been called to do and the last verse we're going to look at is first corinthians 15 verse 58 and this was actually the verse that pastor duncan gave today at church and i it was amazing because this verse talks about how we should be as believers, especially in dealing with this coronavirus. You know, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So it's saying as believers, when anything comes your way, you need to be steadfast. You need to be immovable. Steadfast means that you are fixed on what you have been called to do. You are fixed. Nothing can deter you. So yes, things may come at you. The arrows may come at you. But because you know your focus, nothing is going to derail you from getting where you need to be. And that's what the Lord is saying to us, you know. So yes, amidst all this coronavirus, that does not mean you stop working at your purpose. That does not mean you stop doing what you have been called to do. That does not mean you stop teaching. You find other ways to do it. And also you 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 um it's also a time i believe that the lord is calling us as believers to step up our game and spend more time with him get more in our wood share the wood more share our testimonies more just share everything that is of love of power and of a sound mind even more you know it tells us to be always abounding in the work of the lord 
as a believer, your work never stops. You don't have time off. You work seven days a week, 365, 24 hours a day. Because you have to always be in a state of wanting the Holy Spirit to do something in you and to be a good representative for the Lord. So, you know, I just want to encourage you, especially as a believer, if you have not been operating with the authority that the Lord has given to you and operating in a sound mind, change it. Flip the switch. Don't allow what's happening in the world to make you panic inside and to make you and to derail you from what you really need to be doing i just really want to pray for you guys that you just step up your game and a song to help you as um is this particular song it's called give me eyes to see give me vision to see things like you do lord i look to you i won't be overwhelmed give me vision to see things like you do and it says i will love you lord my god with all my soul so ask the Lord for vision, ask him for clarity, ask him for wisdom, ask him for peace so that you can maneuver as a true believer throughout this coronavirus. Okay, guys? And remember, the work does not stop amidst the chaos. The Lord still requires that we show up and we show out. Bye.